94.4 Spice FM. Four minutes after nine o'clock. Good morning. And how are you doing? Eric Latif, Ndu Oko, CT Muga and Jerry Thorne in the Situation Room on 94.4 Spice FM in Nairobi. www.spicefm.co.ke You can log in there and watch us as well. Our Twitter handles, Spice FM KE and... Uh, uh, as well as our Facebook page, Spice FM KE. Our telephone numbers, where we'd like to hear uh, what your thoughts are on our conversations this morning, 0719-012-600. 0719-012-600. Jerry, you have something to advise the media about. No, I think maybe to have a discussion about. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a new station, I think it's important uh, we have this discussion, which we have had internally. What is our mission and what do we hope to achieve? And one of the things that came out was to inform our listeners and to give them a platform to have intelligent, mature conversations. So there we've given ourselves a mandate. Now, what I want to know is whether... All media houses and platforms, i.e. print, uh, audio and visual, should give themselves a mandate that is to the benefit of the listener. Um, when I say this, what I mean is we are informed by the media. A lot of our values, our value system is informed by the media. Okay, yes, we have the church as well. I think home, parents, but the media plays a crucial role. We are... Um, so our values are shaped by the media. Our opinions, which is more short term and uh, uh, based on current issues, they're shaped by the media. So you listen to one media house and the perspective or the way in which they frame a story will shape how you think of something. So it could be yesterday we were looking at uh, some supposed or alleged hate speech from a senator. Somebody could say he's exercising his freedom of expression. Somebody else could say actually he's inciting people. So depending on how it's reported, you can shape opinions. So there's a duty there on being careful to, to be maybe as open as possible. There's also a duty, I think, by the media to educate and inform or at least not misinform, um, uh, which then plays into the importance of keeping an eye on government and informing its listeners on what government is doing. Um, the media can also sort of shape, I've talked about what our values, our opinions, our cognition, so our thinking patterns as well, it's, it's very important. Basically, we start to see that the media plays a huge role, but if it goes unregulated and it's doing so chaotically and as and when and what they want to do, it can be actually quite dangerous. So should we as a media house give ourselves that role and responsibility towards our listeners? And if so, what should that responsibility be? Are you basing this on anything? Because look... Um, one, one, just like all the others, this is a profit-making organization. Or media <laughs> house. <laughs> so, back at you. <laughs> Come back to bite me. Uh -huh. then, secondly, in terms of, of regulation in media, actually media is regulated, and you know this. The Communications Authority of Kenya mm -hmm. is a regulator. Mm -hmm. And then there's a self-regulating body called the Media Council of Kenya, mm -hmm. which is established under statute. Mm -hmm. And the Media Council of Kenya does a lot of that by saying, uh, reviewing and also under it we have the the, the complaints commission the media complaints mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, body so if you have a, a complaint against something that has been covered in the media whether it has affected you or your community or it has impacted whoever you can go and complain so there's a lot of regulation in this the 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 way in which it's regulated i feel is to put boundaries and restrictions it doesn't give direction per se so it says you can't swear or you know defamation extends to xyz so it puts boundaries but it doesn't give direction on content so for example you have media houses let's say uh let's not name them but if it's audio uh, or rather visual and you have people gyrating and dancing all day and this is done between the hours you know what i'm talking about sort of music mm. and very sexualized and sexually charged um <laughs> sort of dance moves and you have kids there's no watershed time that it comes you know after nine o'clock where kids should be sleeping so that's not regulated it's not given direction as such 
Now, to me, I think there should be a sense of responsibility by that media house that, hold on, kids could be watching this, and what are we creating? Because we need to understand the power of the media. I think we undermine it. Uh, for a lot of especially younger people, it actually gives them a framework through which to navigate life, believe it or not. You know, they see, okay, so I should get married by this age, depending on what they're watching. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? So with that in mind, and without a, a body coming in to regulate what you can and can't do per se, I'm talking about the content, which will always be acceptable, but should they, this media house that is beaming images of women half naked and you know very as i say sexually charged moves dancing do they have a duty to their audience maybe not to show this at a time where kids are still awake for professor instance. ezekiel mutua thank you very much for joining us you came in the body of njeri thorn we now know <laughs> where you are <laughs> city <laughs> you know the thing is you don't know how delighted I am to actually hear Jerry arguing the very same thing I have been arguing. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> We're on the same side. <laughs> <Yeah>. for one. <laughs> so, time. First time for everything. Even yeah. bro- what do they say? Broken clock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, the, the, once a day. Again, mm-hmm. these functions that any business has or should have, it, it isn't one. Again, it's multi thronged it, it, it it's not one thing they're supposed to do this in addition to making money they're supposed to do this now a wise organization will ensure that all these things galvanizes itself to ensuring that they maximize on their profits mm-hmm. now that that's the wisdom now of a sharp organization they ensure that there is something that whoever it is who's consuming the product feels i'm gaining from this this industry that we are in our tool our commodity is information. Yes. That's, that's what we purvey. Yes. So it's how we present it, the manner in which we present it, and how we segment it or structure it so that it actually suits the needs of the specific consumer who would need that particular... Uh, uh, who we are targeting. And that's precisely what we're doing in this particular program. But then comes the question, content. What do we put in and what do we... What don't we? It's informed by your strategy as a business and the target audience that you've looked at. Now, if, if we look at, for example, the Situation Room, the Situation Room is mature, informa- in, informative talk show that looks at issues like this, like what Jerry is raising this morning. But we have this, this is a management uh, policy. We have, they've decided that we want to have this kind of, of content targeting this kind of audience. Now, there's a radio station that has decided to choose a separate kind of audience and giving them the kind of content that they want if you don't have listeners if you do not have readers if you don't have viewers you'll go out of business if there's a thriving business it's because there is an audience for there's it. there's a consumer yes, yes. There's, a consumer. there's a consumer for it so i don't know what, how to what extent uh regulation and 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 um, i don't know with. why we've gone down this route of uh, mutua and, and <laughs> being sort of restrictive no that's not the discussion I want us to have. I'm not talking about putting restrictions. I'm talking about the nature of the content in terms of are we informing or are we just entertaining? Do we have a duty? For instance, when we talk of back to democracy and governance, when we talk of democracy and governance, one of the things that's ailing the West is a lack of information because they're all otherwise consumed in entertainment. In fact, there's theories, conspiratorial as they may be, that things like football is to keep the masses away from, um, from political real, discourse. Exactly. So now what I'm saying as media, we might be doing that, which is actually very unethical. We might be entertaining people and having discourse that is of no benefit to them in the long run. It's entertainment. Do we have a duty to keep them informed, to keep them informed as to what the government is doing, for instance? Because we are, in essence, well, some of us will claim that media is part of government, so is, is an arm of government by acting as a watchdog. It, it has been debated. It's debatable. The fourth estate. Yes. <laughs> Entertainment mm-hmm. is also important. It's important, but if you're using it as a tool for distraction, then it's manipulative. <laughs> but also, <laughs> within that entertainment, people are still being wired and informed by that entertainment. So the nature of the content within that entertainment uh, should also be looked at. I- I'm sure you agree with me that media, and do I haven't heard from you on this, you agree with me that media does shape our value system. It does shape our opinions. Well, what I- your kids watch, you have kids. 
And I'm sure you control or try and control what your kids she's watch. The kids Why is it. that? No, I she, think they're the most vulnerable of, of us. She's and <laughs> most, no, they're the most susceptible she's to this sort of influence. Be careful. Okay. Look, I think that, you know, uh, if we're looking at the role that the media plays, I think one role of media is definitely responsibility in terms of being careful about what it is that we put here. Because definitely once you have something that people are consuming, you know, throughout the day, um, whether they're consuming this visually, whether they're consuming this odd or um, um, in an audiovisual manner, or you know, either way, it bears influence on what it is that they're going to hear. We talked the other day about you know the politics that we see every day. We're consuming this because it's what is put out there, and it could be vice versa. It's being put out there because that's what we want to consume. Mm-hmm. We're consuming it because that is what we want to see. Okay, at the same time. We can be sure that there is a particular part of the population that wants to, you know, you know, be entertained um, by some of these things that we see. However, are we being responsible about the part of that audience that is seeing this that should not be seeing this or should not be hearing this at a particular time? So I think we bear the element, media bears the element of responsibility. In as much as we want to put things out there that will inform and educate and entertain, we have to be responsible in the we have to be responsible in the way we put this out there. Mm-hmm. And I think we bear a huge role when it comes comes to that part of responsibility. We need to be deliberate, basically, about what we're putting out. We, we need to know that this is going to have this consequence. This is going to rile people up the wrong way. There's shows you listen to on the way to work, and you, end, you, know, you come out really negative energy, very angry, because you are influenced by what you're primed to externally. So you, you get into work, and all that they've been talking about is sort of chaos within the home, within the marriage, and you get into work, and you just don't feel good about yourself. And that's very short term. I know this is now sounding like mumbo jumbo. Eric is giving me a funny look, but do not underestimate the power of the media to influence not just our mood, but I keep saying our value system, our long term actions thereafter. I want to give you an example, for instance. The CIA actually invests in media in order to influence its populace, right? So they have done programs and paid for programming, including series, that will desensitize people towards things like Guantanamo Bay. Mm. So, for instance, we all watched 24. It was very entertaining. Yes. Of course, it was, it was not. We weren't the target audience. But I want to show you the, import, the importance of media to our minds. And once we understand that, then we as uh, people in the media or the media itself as well can then realize the, you know, the role they have to play to society. Let's, let's get some feedback from our audience on this. And we've got uh, our telephone lines are 0719-012-600. That's 0719-012-600. We've got Gerard on the line. Hello, Gerard. Hello, I'm Gerard calling from Webuya. Yes, Gerard. What do you uh, have to say about this topic this morning about media? I've been actually about the media. It's about the censorship and ownership of the media that I'm more concerned about with. Yes. Because it doesn't really matter what you say or what you want to air as a journalist, but you go according to the management. Mm-hmm. So personally, I think the management and the organization will determine what you have to say, regardless of your own opinion at some point. Thank you very much. But what influences the organization's thinking or, or thought on, on, on a conversation? No, for example... If the owner of that organization, let's say it's a politician, he'll want you to put or air his views mm-hmm. uh, regardless of your standards uh, personally as a citizen or as a journalist then. So mm-hmm. you're forced to do what he or she wants or mm-hmm. what the organization needs. Yes. Like, for example, if you are more of a content and you want real things, you want to discuss real issues, you'll be forced not to talk that when they show the station is more of entertainment and such kind of stuff. Okay. So as a journalist, he's sort of tied to the policies of the media house the that he owner. works for. Okay. Thank you very much, Gerard. Uh, we also have another caller. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. This is Lydia from Nairobi. Yes. I would also like to comment. If the media shows a naked woman, I would tell the children, look, never do this because people will misuse your body. Then if they show about a man opening his drawer and taking out a gun, I would tell them, look, this person is a mad person to use a gun. He has no right to hurt anyone. 
then if they if he opens his cupboard and he starts drinking alcohol yep. again i'll tell the children look this man he's he's turning himself mad to alcohol all right so, so basically what you're saying Lydia, is that. is media is influencing what um your children are also consuming good morning hello this is spice fm hello good morning yes hello Spice FM, good morning. We seem to have lost this caller. So we are taking a feedback this morning on this topic, 0719012600. These are the matters that we are discussing. And, you know, Jerry has, has brought in the issue of what's the role of the media, really? And, and should media um, revise its role or review its role and make sure that we are serving... Or embrace its or, role. Or, or embrace <laughs> its role. And City, you haven't heard you speak in a while. Uh, the, you know, the, the, there are certain fundamentals, I assume, because one, <clears throat> when someone goes into the business, uh, the, the, the media business, they, they clearly understand the lay of the land, otherwise they wouldn't go into it. Mm-hmm. And they also understand the commodity they're trading in, as I mentioned earlier on, and how best to trade in it. But the truth of the matter is that, apart from the fundamentals, as in looking for the truth, ensuring that the news is verifiable, this also evolves. If we were a country in turmoil, the media house would have a role to ensure that they work as hard as possible to ensure that the turmoil comes to an end. Mm-hmm. If you're a country like ours where every other day there is some sort of scandal that involves the looting of government co- uh, coffers, the media oh, has a role. Mirar and Morsik. Yes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and some fancy hotel in Naivasha. Uh-huh. Uh, the media has a duty to present this. But where the argument often happens is is when you have a headline that is actually of a romantic nature, like what we had in yesterday's papers, we will ask, but why is this national news? Exactly. And yet he explained it. There's more to it than meets the eye. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you can't have a romantic subject being the, the in the headline of two major papers. Which, in which two days consecutively. Yeah. Yes. It's a very interesting point you bring because they have set, the media here have set the agenda. Yes. Which removes the, the viewer or the reader's mind from what is actually important. So now people are discussing Mursik and Mirar and the love uh, between Kitani, uh, Kitani and uh, the MP. Whereas uh, they could uh, be senator. something major. Oh, sorry, <laughs> as a senator, my, my bad. They could be something major that we should be discussing. So here the media is framing certain conversations and leaving out others. Hence, not living up to a responsibility. Now, it's very hard to regulate the media when you tell them. You can't tell them you must report X, Y, Z because it's in, you know, it, it informs or it's important. That's why I was talking about it being an ethical responsibility as opposed to it being a regulatory body that comes in and says you can and you can't. I think by and large, we have very many media houses in Kenya. We have very many TV stations, very many radio stations. We've got a number of newspapers, not just the main dailies. We also have regional uh, newspapers. By and large, to a greater extent, I would want to say that there is that, that aspect of media somebody starts a media house and the basic thing of it is to inform entertain and educate and they try to live by that if you listen to many of the regional radio stations that you have Mm -hmm. you'll find a lot of information that's empowering Mm -hmm. empowering talking about business Mm -hmm. empowering talking about women and business talking about men and business youth programs and they're all talking about this informing so you're saying it's already there where the media is already embracing its role it's embraced its role in fact it embraced its role a long time ago Mm -hmm. the thing that comes into mind is what do the audience want because as a business, you That's actually the, uh, have to follow old age question in media. Do we give them what they want or do they take what we give them? Do they want what we give them? There has been do you see what I mean? Who, who, who decides? Who dictates? Is, is it the consumers they decide or is it we're giving it to them that they're consuming it? It's an age-old question, age-old debate. Mm-hmm. I've had conversations with the senior managers of media houses, especially newspapers, you know, and that whole topic of why these headlines every day? And they'll tell you that uh, in a number of days, we try to change our headline. We put other headlines at the front page and our sales dipped. Yeah. No, no, no one. They always say no one wants to see a plane land safely. Yes. <laughs> People want to read sort of horrible stuff, scandalous stuff. Yes. Okay. It, it, it's, 
dog dog bite man Psst, what's what's the news there man bite dog man bite dog <laughs> <laughs> now that's headline just the same way as woman goes to court accusing man of refusing to accept him as uh, accept her as, as husband it's it's good fodder this is a story and, and i want to say this is not even a story that I don't actually believe that it's being advanced or by anyone or there's any unhand uh, connotation in this. This is a matter between two people that has just gone to, uh, to the public and um, the two people uh, happen to be uh, public figures. They've got national profiles. And so because they've decided to go to it in open court, it becomes news. And because people are consuming it, it becomes even better news that's why if you look at it, at, at it in the last couple of days it started from being a page three story now it's a front page story we've all realized ah people want to consume this these are the conversations this is where the conversations are uh, uh, miss kitani's lawyer is really enjoying this dance Omari. he's he's really enjoying the kind of mileage that he's getting and, mm. people, and in, interestingly enough, I think there are a number of people who are gobbling it uh, up, which again, you bring in that question in, in terms of, are we giving them what they want or are they, you know, dictating what it is that we put out there? But you'll find that uh, uh, it would be interesting to see if there were any peaks uh, in, in terms of sales when it came to, sto when it comes to stories like this that make their way into the, into, into the press. At the same time, I do feel that the role of media, though that there's some fundamental things that they do or that, you know, that media does in terms of informing educating and you know entertaining that it's not necessarily static i think the other things that come in line whether it is shaping uh shaping whether it's influencing and i think that role changes it has its ebbs and flows as you go along and i think that we have to take that into consideration however it needs to be peppered with responsibility when it comes to looking at then how who it is that we are influencing how then do you pepper the yellow press <laughs> it's already peppered so how do you actually <laughs> pepper it I mean they say things that you sh uh, arguably you should say they discuss matters that ordinarily say you shouldn't discuss in public and they sell Mm. A lot. Again, they because are part this is a, of the media. Again, yes. yeah, because it's what people. It's it's. I think you kind of like have uh, it's part a, of a Bermuda that. triangle of sorts in there because <laughs> you're neither here or there because we're wondering. Okay, so how do we then do that when it comes to the responsibility side of things? Controversy is information as well. Mm. They, 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 they they meet a need. Scandal is information. Uh, wonderful information. <laughs> right. Is so it relevant in my day to day life? Is it going yes. to help me make better choices, whether it's politically or? You know, in my day-to-day -day life, no. Yes. You know, Jerry, City, <laughs> City used a term the other day which, you know, got, got you a bit um, elitist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And, and this is it. You know, saying that something is not relevant to you doesn't mean that it's not relevant to everybody. How is people sharing Mira and Mursik and making love or you are our love was sealed you are not the target. with Mira and Mursik? How is that going to help anybody's life that piece of information how is it going to help me be a better human being make better choices have better relations whatever how is it helping anybody well you know how to uh, behave uh, no, no how not to behave uh, how not to behave Eric, now you're sounding elitist it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's entertainment like i said okay Some if you if you say it's entertainment yes <laughs> if you say it's information yes, yes. But how long are we Education. going to keep entertaining? And the prominence it has. I mean, it's right bang in the middle of the top of the page headlines. And then on the other paper, the same thing. People enjoy reading. People can uh, actually start they, to think it's important. They do think it's important. They enjoy They've been made reading. to think it's important. It is not important. The there are more other pressing matters that the public needs to be informed on, which will help actually shape even their feelings towards politicians and therefore their votes thereafter. And that's why that newspaper has more than 30 pages. All that information they're talking about. But it's been given there. undue import by being placed at the top of the page and running two days, three days in a row, I think. This is the sort of responsibility I'm talking about. Most people won't realize that this is of no consequence and there's more important information for them to consume inside the paper. I think Jerry is using uh, advancing an, an issue of responsibility or lack of it to censure the media. <laughs> this is censorship. Oh, this no. is censorship. No, this, yes, this, self is self self censorship is still censorship. Self censorship has actually been done by the media. So in Jerry as an external as no, a consumer, self censorship is, is to, said to be done by the media. 
she, she wants to censor as a consumer. No, no, not at all. You, you go back, you, you're back to this restrictive discourse. No, I'm not talking about censoring things. When I'm talking about making things, sure we put out important information that will help change the course of people's lives, maybe help with their decisions in the next election. Do we have a duty to do that? That then is please, my question. Please accept and that I what think is acceptable do. to you is not acceptable to everybody. What is not How is that unacceptable what is not to accept- anybody what is not that accept- is reasonable and of sound mind? How is that unacceptable? What is unacceptable to you is also re- acceptable to somebody This is else. unacceptable to anybody of sound mind. Censorship. <laughs> 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 Censorship <laughs> comes in. This is a situation where we're discussing the role of the media this morning. We've had a couple of topics to discuss this morning. 27 minutes to 10 o'clock. How are you doing? This is Eric Latif in the Situation Room. Also in the room is Ndu Oko, Jerry Thorne and C.T. Muga. Let's talk about uh, what happened last year. All right. So around March 9th, 2018, President Uhuru Kenyatta and Right Honorable Raila Odinga emerged from um, Harambe House and stood at the steps and said, we have reached an amicable agreement. We are going to shake hands. We have decided that we are going to um, change the way we look at things and politics in this country. And now, as brothers, in fact, since then, they've been calling each other brother. Barely a month later, April uh, 29th, a 14-member team was unveiled with an eight-point agenda. And the team was called the Building Bridges Initiative Team. And the Building Bridges Initiative Team was given an eight-point agenda. Look at what things have been making us, you know, fight every time we come out of an election, have been making us have acrimonious politics, and come and tell us what we need to do. Go to the public and talk to the people. This is headed by a secretariat, and the secretariat has two people, and one of them is Rai Laudinga's a very strong supporter, Paul Mwangi, lawyer Paul Mwangi, and the other one is Ambassador Martin Kimani, who has been working for the government. The team has gone around the country, has, in fact, it was gazetted for an initial uh, period of time. That time elapsed, and then after that, we started seeing them going around the country. And what have they been doing? They've been holding meetings, and people have been going to make presentations to that team. Among the presentations that have been made is matters to do with our governance, our system of government, uh, how we're operating, and all has been pointing towards uh, we've got cracks in this current constitution, and I think we need we think we need to review the cracks in the current constitution. Let me give you the TOR, the terms of reference for the Building Bridges Initiative are evaluate the national challenges outlined in the joint communique of the building bridges to a new Kenyan nation and make practical recommendations and reform proposals that build lasting unity. So examine what has been ailing us, make practical recommendations and proposals on what we need to do going forward. Public hearings by the Building Bridges Initiative concluded uh, last week. They have said that they have taken a retreat to go and work on a comprehensive report which they should give uh, to the two principals, that's uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. He doesn't like being called former. Uh, uh, even his supporters don't like. So not former Prime Minister, but AU, High Representative on Infrastructure, the Right Honourable Prime Minister Raila Odinga. Okay. The Building Bridges Initiative has actually gathered a lot of steam lately. <coughs> After a Kuru Aukot Third Way Alliance went and gathered signatures and uh, acquired support of more than a thousand people, a million people, sorry, who said <laughs> we'd like to amend the constitution. And they came up with a bill, and it's called the Punguzam Zigo Bill. Now, we've seen politicians who are, are supporting the Building Bridges Initiative uh, rallying against the Punguzam Zigo bill and telling us, wait, 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 the BBI is going to come up with a better bill that will address all those issues. It has actually better representation from the public. And I'm looking at it and saying, until the other day, it was not clear exactly what the BBI and the 14 eminent persons are doing. It wasn't clear exactly what the 14 people uh, were supposed to be uh, drafting or getting views on and now they're telling us all right we'll come back with a bill and the politicians have started saying that they'll uh, present the bill to the principals the principals may take the bill to uh, the national assembly and if there's some clauses that require a referendum well so be it we may go into a referendum and i'm thinking the two shook hands 
the two made some uh, private agreement and whatever agreement it was it was good for the country because it made us uh, forget the heated politics that we had earlier however building bridges initiative was just a way of you know people said so what is this that you guys agreed on uh what what are you doing about it in fact i remember Amos Wako, who's now a member of this 14 member uh, bbi <laughs> saying you know what these two gentlemen shook hands and unless they take some action <coughs> to actually advance what they were discussing whatever they discuss is going to waste and that's when the bbi was formed um has this been wool of our eyes have the two politicians actually been advancing something? Is, is, is the whole idea of having BBI just to take a sort of referendum so that we can create the positions uh, of, of, you know, a split uh, executive versus uh, legislator, head of government and head of state. We split government and state. Has this been the agenda all along from the very moment that went and shook hands and said, you know what, instead of having uh, to fight again, let's find a way in which we can accommodate each other. And so let's go through the constitution. We saw this in 2008 when Kofi Annan and, uh, emerged and told Moai Kibaki and Raila Odinga to shake hands. They had agreed on creating a position of prime minister. And of course, to formalize that, they went and amended the constitution so that we could create a position of prime minister. Is it the same? Have we been wasting one or not wasting? Have we taken the last one and a half years and maybe more heading towards one agenda all along? Split state and government create more positions so that my people can have positions. I think instead of sort of looking through a crystal ball and trying to predict the future or speculating, what we need to focus on is why this came about in the first instance. And there's no question about it. There was a lot of tension in the country. With our voting system, I think we, the Jubilee government won by say 54 percent that is another 46 percent of the country if we had to do it very basically um that voted for the opposition and felt left out and given the nature of our politics it's very divisive um there was talk of cessation do you realize the seriousness and the implications of that where a whole you know groupings and collectively communities are feeling they're not part of the country this is what led to this initiative and i think the focus should be on the fact that this initiative has managed to curb those tensions in the country is moving on very well in terms of development. There's very little uh, because before opposition was not necessarily objective, it was subjective and for the sake of the leaders to, to sort of fight things out as opposed to for the sake of uh, changing policy for the betterment of society. So for me, BBI, you know, we can speculate and say was it purely um, to, to reach this place where we create a position for a premier? Was it purely to... Um, what was the other suggestion you made? Sorry, it was quite far-fetched. I don't remember. <laughs> to push for referendum. <laughs> to push. Was it purely for the referendum? There is no doubt a referendum is needed. You know, the constitution needs to be revisited. Firstly, look at how much we're spending in terms of a wage bill on MCAs and so on. So that's something completely different. I believe that is the genesis for me uh, for wanting a, a constitution review or a referendum. But with regards to uh, the Building Bridges Initiative, I think it's one of the best things to come out of uh, the Jubilee leadership to bring people together. There's been tensions for, for decades now and leaders have been able to capitalize on this in the run-up to elections and cause unnecessary tensions. We talked about cohesion yesterday and I think this is a brilliant instrument to bring us together. It was uh, it was getting quite, uh, it was going to be quite nasty. Cessation is not a joke. Huh? There's bloodshed, there's we saw what happened and how long it took Sudan. So such talk, and if we let it gain momentum and ca get traction, was very dangerous. And it is true. There was a whole community feeling completely left out of leadership in Kenya. And I think that's where BBI stems from. Looking at how far they've gone in terms of the progress that has been made with the initial plan, just looking at the name of it, Building Bridges Initiative. Now, the bridges were being built between um, the political class. The bridges were being built between, obviously, the, the clear tribal lines that had been drawn in this country, especially uh, around any time there were elections, uh, around election electioneering period. So if we're looking at an initiative that was meant purely for 
bringing pe- people together to look at the issues that we discussed even yesterday along the lines of cohesion and unity to say that now moving forward we're going to operate as a unit in this country however uh, g- g- grandio- grandiose that seems but it looks like that is what it was meant for um then again, to look at how far then have we gone? Do you feel that the country is in a more cohesive way because of this initiative and its implement or, and its implementation or its practice, as it were? Do people feel, whether it's along those political lines or whether it's along those tribal lines, do we feel more cohesive as a country? Do we feel that we are now on the same line in the same in the same how would it say in the same uh, in the same corner uh, because of this? If not, then. We can easily say that, you know, again, maybe this was a tool or this was a plot to make us, you know, feel as if that particular work was being done, but it actually was not. Um, uh, other things were going to happen whether we liked it or not. Referendum was going to happen because obviously there was hue and cry for certain things to change in the way legislation was done in this country or in the way things were being uh, put out in this country. BBI, a good initiative, but in terms of how far it has gone and in terms of its success rates, I don't know how that can be measured in terms of what people feel. City, before you come in, I'd like to just respond. You know, Jerry, the cohesion <laughs> that, that you mentioned, it's fine. Yes, we've had cohesion. We've actually had a turn down of political rhetoric. But it's not because of BBI 14-member team. It's because of Raila and Uhuru, period. Did we need to have this team of 14 people? Those people haven't even been visible. BBI how is much, an offshoot of, how, of how the handshake. It's to keep yeah. the handshake going, even in conversations and in our minds, and then in the initiatives that will crystallize thereafter. That's what BBI is about. But the people haven't even, you know, could it have been done any other way? We had the two people, right? This they shook hands, and because they shook hands, they rallied their supporters towards one another. And, and how sh- do you keep that momentum and show people that you're still together? Because telling people we're now together, if it's not particularly tangible in people's hearts and minds, how, how do you keep that going as, a, as an opinion or as a feeling that we're together? More importantly, if you want to show the nation that you're serious about this notion, how do you explain to them that this is something that you want to practicalize? You then form the BBI that you, you is You need an initiative. Yes, yeah. something that <clears throat> will embody and also articulate now, what, you what can't you do this by mind. making statements. So that it can manifest into mm. action. It's not just a handshake. It can manifest into benefits that Kenyans will feel with the cohesion and, and so on. It's, it's an initiative that remember, is, is very well intended. The, I don't the, know why the, you're the, trying the to throw mud at it. The, the, the initiative has also involved the public. That, that's one of the things it has done. Mm. What they haven't done is what Njeri keeps pointing out. The government doesn't do a very good job of advertising and telling people the things that they do. And perhaps this is where the Third Way Alliance have come in. You see, they have a bill. Yes, and it's here. It's yes, a, 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 it. yes, it's not just a, they have a bill. They've come up with it, and they're saying this is what we intend to do. People have gone to court. The court has said, eh, hey, hey, eh, delay. Now, you see what I'm saying? Yes. When Ekuro Court and his team at Third Way Alliance, they sat down and they thought, all right, these are the issues that we would like to address. They came to the people with the issues and said, point number one, number two, number three, number four, what do you think about these four points? And they said, right, we agree and put a signature, 1 million to, 1.2 million of them. BBI already knows, like you're saying, Raila and Uhuru had sat down and, and, and thought of what they'd like. And then they come to the public and ask the public, what do you think? What, do you, what would you like? Without telling us, Ekuru is, telling, is coming with, a, with seven points and saying these are the seven points. BBI is going across the country. BBI saying, is not a petition, us, though. Give it's, us your th- points. These are very different uh, instruments. <laughs> BBI is not a, a petition. It's, it's a sentiment mm. that needs, this is the instrument through which it can crystallize and manifest itself so that we can have this uh, peace and cohesion we're talking about and there's only one person because eric unless you're working for him there's only one person who is against and who could be against this and it's uh, it's, no, it's, it's, it's a for it's personal <laughs> gain because it doesn't make sense why you would beat this initiative I'm given not where we are coming from I, i'm not beating the initiative by all means there's you, one person who has been at a disadvantage as a result of this and that's on political grounds right when power and leadership, it's a lot. It, That's it, it, it. It's cost everything. Him a lot. It's everything. It's power It's and his life, yes. So for you to come in from this angle, very suspect. 
you can suspect it as far as, as much Very as you want. Suspect. Listen, the, the issue <laughs> here is that we've got we've got the initiative going across <laughs> around the country, and the initiative is is, is <clears throat> holding public hearings. And you're but, trying to well, criticize it with no, no grounds. No, but but no, no. But why can he not criticize it, Njeri? But the I mean, criticism yeah, should be substantive and objective. This is very subjective and based on one person's. No, no, no. You I are saying it. <laughs> you are saying it is subjective. You are saying uh-huh. yeah, it is subjective. It doesn't. Okay, make it what subjective. is your criticism? Because it's been speculative. It's all been suspicion. Do you think maybe perhaps it was so that X Y Z? No, I don't. But these are the facts. It was done because there was a lot of tension in the country. There was talk of cessation. There was a whole group or collective masses who felt they were left out of leadership and it brought us together. And as a result, we've been able to move forward without the negative, divisive rhetoric that we've been having for years. Who else would have been able or who else has been able to do this for us as a country? Now, for you to come in and start speculating around that and bring in the undertones that we've heard from certain camps within Jubilee, you know, <laughs> no, no, you, Jerry you, is questioning she's, she's your rights mo- and your freedoms <laughs> yeah. to actually I am express not, I am yourself. I'm questioning his intentions because I. Do well, you see? You can't come in with speculations. We have the facts. But you can't come in with suspicions. Let's I am keep not things speculating. within. I always say the realms of reality. <laughs> and I am not speculating. And I, I put it as a statement. Everything was. Do you think perhaps no, maybe? No. Who it, knows? I put it as a statement, and I said BBI mm-hmm. has been wool over our eyes. I did not speculate. I said it. Clear. Oh, it was, was your opinion. Yes. It was your opinion. My opinion okay, is which that. is subjective. Wool of. And that, that's exactly but, what an but, opinion whereas is. Whereas I am being objective, I'm telling you these are the facts. One, two, three. There's no opinion here. This is not a case for having an opinion. Yes. You're, is, you're, uh, you're not allowed an opinion. Uh, <laughs> your facts are also based on opinion. And your opinion is that the country was divided. You're, you're, I don't think that was my opinion. It, it, there was a general those, consensus that the country was very divided post-2017. There was, general consensus. 2017. There was, there general, was there's yes. general consensus if after saw, every election that the country is divided. There yes, was general but consensus here in there was talk of cessation. We had there was seen general, there was talk of cessation in 2007. There was talk of cessation in 2013. There's talk of thank cessation God now. for the leadership that we have and in the, Jubilee that they thought to get rid of this talk. And the two leaders, yes. by creating BBI. And that was enough. Have the two leaders. The two leaders met, and mm-hmm. the two leaders were enough because they are the leaders. Mm-hmm. They were enough, and they they have a brigade in Parliament. They have a brigade of legislators. Mm-hmm. So this thing of saying, all right. One month later, in fact, even one of the members, one of the person who ended up being appointed into the 14-member team was questioning, so what was this handshake all about? So what are they going to do with this handshake? Mm-hmm. What are they, then he's appointed into the, into the commission. Who's that? Amos Wako. Okay. <laughs> he's appointed into the 14-member BBI committee. And then they go around the Has country. Has he spoken since? He's been quiet. He's just been saying, you know, we're working on this. Amos Wako mm-hmm. was attorney general in this country for long the longest time and he a was long the longest, time ago as well he was the longest not a very long time ago <laughs> he was the longest serving as 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 lately as t- 2010 he was actually he he, he, That's he 10 years ago yes I mean, no. he was actually the, the constitution is not was not enacted a long time ago it's only nine years ago all right and nine amos walker was the time. ag who held it and gave it to kibaki yes mm-hmm. amos walker knows the journey to creating this new constitution involved a lot of going to the public Yashpal guy did that. The uh, committee of experts did that. Now we create another body that goes to the public to get the same to information. Capture the sentiments so are we of the, the sentiment, people. Is it possible capture that the sentiments of mm-hmm. the people? And then you come back and you look at even before the report of the BBI is out, because Jerry, fact, BBI has not given us any report. Fact. Fact is, we have seen people like Jerry Thorne and others go before the BBI and give their opinion <laughs> to the BBI on how the country should operate. As Fact. I told you, there would, there's only one person who is but not benefiting have, and then we have from seen, the BBI. And then we have seen politicians. And when you speak against the BBI, you are speaking from his camp. We see politicians who, some of them who are... Who wouldn't like, want building bridges? I mean, even the wording... It's so embracing <coughs> of, a, of nationhood and statehood. Why wouldn't you want that? You know, building Unless bridges, whoever building, doesn't want no, it, Jerry, their, their objective Jerry, to get to power Jerry, supersedes Jerry, nationhood w- and statehood? Jerry, no, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you agree that the, the very purpose for which media houses exist uh, the fun- and one of the functions that they must conduct or perform is the very thing that Eric is doing? I'm questioning. Yes.
he 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 is not now lambasting. Now she will say, it. "I'm being subjective." But we have to we have to be reasonable about it. But 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 what it is it? Everything Eric every, has, everything that is, that Eric has said it has been speculative. Do you think maybe perhaps I think I haven't that no, they were pulling, and I corrected your position that on that, and you're still stuck on that position that I've been speculating. As opposed to looking at the facts, it the is not facts speculative. Are the country was divided. There was a handshake. Thank God for that. And to build on that handshake and to keep the momentum and to gain even more traction, the BBI uh, or the the initiative was put together Jerry, the country, so that we also have something through which we can launch other initiatives the that country was bring alarmingly together. divided it the was. country is always divided after it was, an election so, so this was well, alarmingly so it heightens at, it heightens and then an it With normalizes each consecutive one it heightens because each time a certain group is not in power again what are we so hoping each time it's getting more what are we hoping this initiative is going to achieve for the people of the country, not a, not no, 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 not that, not along political lines, but what are we hoping? It's achieved a lot of stability for starters. Okay, but well, new politics is what drives almost everything in this country. Right, so, it's, so it it's, the the it's the driver. It's the driver. However, I'll tell you, a major component in terms of people is the citizenry of this country, and these are whom they are looking to get in, um, um, influence over or opinions from. I'll tell you what Jerry and Co are looking for. <laughs> amending the constitution and splitting of state which and government. No, there is no harm. And that's the whole there is goal no harm in revisiting the and constitution. That's the whole goal of this BBI. And you know, taking us on a ruse, going across the country, <laughs> saying that they are collecting our views. Nah. Our telephone numbers this morning: zero seven one nine zero one two six hundred. That's zero seven one nine zero one two six hundred. The conversation is also on Twitter and Facebook at Spice FMKE on Twitter, Spice FMKE on Facebook. What do you think? Would love to know uh, what do you think on this matter. You know, City, you haven't actually told us what do you think. You've just been uh, uh, laughing and smiling, chuck chuckling in the corner. <laughs> well. <laughs> You see, the thing is, the two of you are presenting this issue as though you are at variance, and you are actually are not. The fact that someone presents... She's dug in. Anybody who talks against is, is speaking again, for... Again, no, that, that is her fundamental right, because she is right. Anyone, anyone, who, right. anyone who moves the country from a, the, 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 a, precipice, a precipice of disaster, that is a good thing. It doesn't matter how much you, you look at it. Raila but, and Uhuru have won my accolades. Go on. Yes, they have. What the Punguza Mzigo has done, it has lit the fire. Because all of a sudden, you have a legal document that is not just purporting to do certain things. It has set the ball rolling for almost a similar agenda. And they seem to be taking pole position in this issue. When I look at the reaction of the politicians with regard to the Punguza Mzigo uh, in, um, petition, it is clear that someone has stolen the thunder from the other. And some people are not happy about this. But that we're going for a referendum, I don't think that is speculative. If you look at the utterances, Kiraitu Murungi said something when the BBI visited Meru. Martha Karua said something concerning these same issues. Yep. Politicians who have some say... The Right Honorable uh, uh, Raila Odinga himself has mentioned this. The President himself has mentioned this. The Deputy Governor has mentioned this, but in the negative as opposing Deputy it. Deputy President. Uh, would I call him Deputy what? Governor? Yes. yes. Deputy oh, President. He uh, is the only person <laughs> opposing the yes. BBI. Who, yes. who would oppose such peace? De the Deputy President is not opposing any amendment to the Constitution. Mind you, if you actually look at it objectively, he says, it's okay, let's amend the Constitution. However, the root or the objectives of amending this constitution are what he has uh, contention with. But, but, but you're saying, you're but Eric, to, to what, is he, what, what then is he contending against? If you're amending it to create, if you're amending it to Punguza Mzigo, well, so, I'm, I'm so okay. essentially you're telling it us, he's Ongeza, saying, Ongeza amend, it, amend it to suit my purposes. If right. it doesn't suit my purposes, then you shouldn't amend it. No, he's saying exactly what I'm saying. Amend Which it, is? yes, but be very, very clear. On, come to us and tell us, I'd like you to amend this so that we can create Actually, positions. he's against any amendment, from my understanding. No. And no, that's no, a conversation no, no. He, for another day. He is not against any amendment. Have you been visiting Karen? You're beginning to sound... So I'm, I'm disturbed. It's I used so, to know you, Eric. It's so I'm disturbed. I What's consume, happening here? I consume information objectively. <laughs>
All right. And I know that mm. the deputy president went and presented a paper at Chatham House in the, in the UK, in London. And what did he say? He said, yes, if we look at this constitution, we look at the system of government that we have, we look at what we have in place, we may need to tweak up places here and there. This constitution will need to be amended for it to work. And in fact, he has even said, you all told us when I was saying, let's vote no for this constitution. You went and told the people, the majority, and you got the majority and you told the, them. The deputy president the is categorically against any referendum. Any B- he has BBI, state, any state. referendum. Why is he against the BBI? I, I, since you, you you seem to be inside his po- sorry because it, to it, know. it because it appears <laughs> that the B- <laughs> B- it appears that the BBI is an agent pushing for certain. referendum and, and, and a pushing a for constitution pushing it's for a, constitutional it change. It embraces no. another leader. No, it has that a certain position and it's Where, not being no. forthright on you that You people are being logical about these things. That's not political speak. Politicians do not oppose things based on the logic that you are bringing forth. Mm -hmm. They oppose things when it influences or affects them or it adversely influences things against them. It has nothing to do with any of these things. How do they position themselves vis-a-vis that so-called referendum? Absolutely. (laughs) Or or, or the BBI. Only one fella is at a disadvantage. Let's wait. Politically. Let's wait and see what... You see, even Jerry is speculating. She doesn't know what the BBI is going to tell us, uh, the report of the BBI is going to tell us. When it comes out before October, as Paul Mwangi has said, Mm -hmm. they have a deadline for October and they want to to present their their report before October. Let's wait and see what it says. Maybe some of those amendments do not actually require creating or splitting, which is something I'd like us to discuss one of these days. The merit of splitting state and government and creating a parliamentary system of government in the Republic of Kenya. Hmm. The one that is split down the middle. <laughs> Topic for another day, though. This is the Situation Room. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Eric Latif. And do Oko, Jerry Thorne and CT Muga have been with you since um, 6 a.m.? 6 a.m. And now coming to 10 o'clock, we'll be back tomorrow, bright and early again, 6 a.m. to 10 o'clock. And our telephone numbers again, 0719-012-600. Also, these conversations that we've been having have also been uh, happening on our social media handles, Spice FM KE on uh, Facebook and Twitter. The conversation continues there. Keep tuned in to Spice FM 94.4 in Nairobi, 87.9 in Mombasa, 102.5 in Kisumu, 96.0 in Nakuru, 96.7 in Eldoret, 90.9 in Nyeri, 97.6 in Malindi. We are across the country indeed and also globally www.spicefm.co.ke. At 7 o'clock, the adults in the room will be here, but between now and then, some lovely music. Enjoy.